just drove all over looking for a great spot to set up and do this tutorial video for you guys. Now I got these really loud people right over there. They just keep getting louder and louder and louder. Dude, they can't hear me talking right now, so why the f can I hear them? It's sort of a bitch to find a place during tourist season where nobody's at that's quite this beautiful. Let me introduce myself. My name is Sean Oz, and I am glad to do what I can to help you guys with the Mavic Pro or any other drone or tech or review stuff that I ever happen to come across. Today, I am stoked because I'm sort of a lazy droner. Less is more. I'd rather do smarter work than harder work. And today, DJI has made that possible. DJI has just released an update to the firmware as well as to the Go4 app, which includes pano, pano mode. The app itself will stitch the stuff together and in the end you have just an awesome pano that you have to do barely any work on. Brackenridge is over there. Keystone Ski Resort is behind me over there. I'm gonna see if I can get a pano that gets the lake and just a gorgeous shot right here. And we'll see how it goes. Let's try it out. There's four modes. When I'm in terrain like this, I typically hand launch and hand catch my Mavic. There's just rocky stuff everywhere. There's water everywhere. There's dirt everywhere. And I don't have a landing pad with me. If you haven't seen my five ways to hand catch your Mavic, look up there and go check it out. It's really easy and it really is easy. I'm getting off subject. Let's get back to the panos. I've got the screen recorder on. I'm going to be able to cut back and forth and show you what's actually happening. As you can see right now with this new update, there's a little quiz that pops up that says, hey, DJI knowledge quiz. Do you know this, this, and that? And a lot of people seem to think that you have to actually answer those questions before you can fly, but no, you can hit skip and everything goes right as normal. You want to be in camera mode not video mode. I'm actually just filming in JPEGs, but I use true color and my settings are set at true color and my style is negative one plus one plus two. I've had a lot of people who think that this looks great. I think it looks great. As you can see right now, the blues are great. The colors are great. If I do any post editing, it's so minor. We'll see at the end of this video. Maybe I'll even go over that if there's time. So with that set up, you do the same thing. You click over here to the right underneath the picture button. You go under photo. And at the bottom of that, you see pano. When you click that, it gives you a little brief description. Then you see four modes. You see spear, 180, vert, and horizontal. So spear takes the longest. Let's just jump right into it. Get this baby up in the air. And it is windy right now. I'm not worried about chopping my own fingers or any of that stuff. We're gonna start the spear. First, I'm gonna go up in the air. I sort of wanna go high enough to see Keystone pretty good. I'm using my body as a shadow from the sun so I can make sure that I have my settings correct. Let's see what I've got. I've got an auto at the moment, so let's turn it into manual. That looks about right to me. You don't want to overexpose it. I'd rather underexpose it a little than overexpose it because it's much easier to fix in post if you need to. Let's go up to about 100 feet and see how that looks. Now, I wish there was some way for me to know that it was going to pan left to right because what I really want is that to that. For now, let's just bring the camera down just a little bit. And hit go. It's going to take 34 pictures. And I got a feeling that those straight down pictures are going to be really dark. So I'm really curious even if auto would do better in this. I'm going to speed this up real quick so you guys don't have to watch it all. So it's taken the pictures and then it just stays in hover. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in full auto mode and I wanna do the same thing again. And I'm really curious what happens in that mode. So the camera readjust, it looks like it's trying to. Ooh, that's, 
I got a feeling you want to do this in manual mode. That's done. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back into manual. I think that looks better. And then we're going to go back into the photo and we're going to switch it to 180. And I'm going to go ahead and go through every mode prior to showing you the results since it is a little windy out today. So you just go ahead and after you switch modes, click start. And this one takes 21 pictures. I wonder how it decides what is the starting and stopping point of that pano. Now let's go ahead and do the next one. This is a vertical, which should be pretty self-explanatory. So we'll hit start. And that one's really quick. Now we're putting it in horizontal, which I'm not quite sure what the difference between that and 180 is, but let's see what happens. So it looks like 180 takes more than horizontal. Let me try and bring this down. I want you to see if you can see what it's doing all automatically. You can see it moving on its own. The camera's going up and down on its own. This is all automated in the Go4 app. 21 pictures, all automated. sensors picked me up so it stays in pano mode so if you switch back and forth the video and you hit capture picture it's gonna capture a picture in pano mode whichever the last one it is you use I'm gonna bring it in for landing I'm gonna show you how to stitch these together it is so <laughs> easy this is what we've all been waiting for because even if you have the skills to use one of these aftermarket programs Lightroom Photoshop even the easier ones that do it for you it's still not this easy really that easy the easiest way to stitch these together and then just get them on your phone your device or bring them into your computer is to just click the little play button in the bottom right of your screen and you'll see all the shots you just took. You just click it and bam, it starts stitching it together. It's for us lazy editors, really don't have the time to put in, you just wanna tweak stuff, this is this is a godsend right here. The world one sort of makes a, a little planet. Now, I haven't quite figured out how to get it so you can maybe take this little planet and move it around and bring it into Facebook or whatever else. Download it like that by clicking the little check mark on the bottom, and that's that. And we can see if this second one that's an auto if it looks any different. Wow, that's a lot brighter. Now, one thing that I have found you can do with these, is you can move them around, see? I haven't figured out how to make it so that other people can do this. Like you can do it on your phone and you can do it in this app, you can straighten it out, you can even do it backwards like this. It's really cool. I mean, dude, that is just awesome. However, when you download them into your photos, you'll see they flatten out for some reason. If somebody knows how to make them stay circular or how you can make it so other people can make them like a little planet, let me know in the comments. That would be much appreciated because I haven't figured that part out yet. All right, let's go back and check out these other ones. This was 180 pano. That one takes a little bit of time to stitch. Okay, that's really nice. Okay, so now you've got your images and they should all be in your photo album. I typically just do a quick little adjustment if anything. For example, you click edit, it goes into these modes. This bottom one here has light color. Stay away from the black and white. I'll typically go to light first. I'll go into the modes myself. I'll adjust my black point. 
Then I'll go up to brilliance, tweak it just a little bit, back and forth until I find it looks about right. My exposure. Highlights is pretty interesting. If you go too high on the highlights, everything just gets washed out. So you go lower, your blues and everything start to pop. Contrast. Brightness. Let's see, if you go too high on the brightness, washes out. But if you could take this image twice and take this one like that, and that one like that for the left side, that one for the right side, you'd have the perfect image. So for today, we're going to just probably leave it right about there. And with shadows. You know, shadows are different every time. Right about there. Go down into color. I typically like things that have more of a blue tint. You see, if I go higher, everything yellows out. If I go this way, it blues out a little too much. So I typically just go a little bit down into the blue range. Contrast, this one is a hit or miss. Sometimes I don't touch it, sometimes I do. And then you've got your saturation, which a lot of people oversaturate like that. And that looks really cool, but it's a little bit overkill. And the sky actually is about the blueness that you see me bumping that up to. Click done, you got a quick edit ready for Facebook. That is the new pano modes on the DJI Mavic. Like I said, they are easy to use. It's a great addition and they work. They just work and they work well. I appreciate everybody taking the time to watch this. Click like, subscribe, leave me a comment. I got a lot more drone stuff in the works as well as so much more. So click that little bell icon so you don't miss anything and I'll catch you next time. One last thing before we go. Notice the top right corner here. There is my memory card, and as you open that up, if you go to the media, all the video I did shows, which is just this one. Gorgeous day, by the way. But let me ask you guys, I've noticed this, and it comes and goes. Notice on the left side that mountain's blurry and everything else is in focus. Occasionally, the left side of my screen blurs out, and it's so annoying. Anyways, you see all the panoramic captures that I've done come up in HTML form. There's links to all the shots. If we go under 001 there, you can go backwards and you can see there's a panoramic folder too. And it's the same shots that it's showing in the HTML format for some reason. You can manually take these and you can go stitch them together. But the only way you can really seem to get them stitched together is to use the go for app to do that for you save that over to your phone and then presto you can then bring that file from your phone into your computer or you can edit it on your phone and be done with it